Party people, what's going on with you? B-Cube here. This is the Impact Lounge. Getting ready to hit 2,500 subscribers, so thank you to everyone who's been loyal up to this point. I greatly appreciate you. I want to drop a little bit of information on you guys um, from Reddit. So uh, shout out to Blood Rain uh, for hitting me on Twitter with this information. And I, I've seen this um, this guy, uh, King of Georgia 95, on Reddit before. Um, I believe he's a former Impact employee and has been dropping some knowledge backstage uh, news from the company. And it's it's been fairly accurate so far. I don't think he's said anything that was uh, completely, completely off base. But since I've just had such a busy couple weeks, uh, I wanted to take some time here this morning to uh, to talk about what he said. And um, I will keep up with what he says every week, and I'll make sure to drop it here on the channel. So January set of tapings coming up. I think what we can expect to see is um, if you guys heard the Scott Demore and Don Callis interview with Jeff, Jer not Jeff Jericho, Chris Jericho, um, they said that we're going to see some new names in January. That you can't really re reboot a new project. Not a reboot. So this is not a reboot, but you know, um, a more stable direction. Different creative, obviously. Uh, but you can't really start off the new year with the same players. You know, the same cast. So we're definitely going to see uh, when Jan January rolls around. We're definitely going to see a few new names. So here's some of the ones that they're hoping for. And I don't know if this is going to be for January or sometime in 2018 or what. Um, they're hoping to have Will Ospreay come back. Now, if this is if they're able to strike the deal, deal with uh, Ring of Honor New Japan. It says here is a 40% chance we could see Will Ospreay. If you remember famously about two years ago, he admitted to using TNA to uh, during their UK tour uh, so that he could wrestle in Wembley Stadium. So... I know he got a lot of uh, negative uh, backlash and, and heat from the Impact fans, but I, th I think it's something. You know, we have to we have to be forgiving. He did apologize, so um, if this is something we could see, and if he could be in the Impact ring once again, uh, with mixing up with some of the X Division stars or maybe even some of the bigger stars, because he's created a larger name for himself at this point, then that would be really cool. Another name. Um, is Matt Riddle. It says here is a 50-50 chance that uh, we could see him. Now, Matt Riddle, a couple years ago, or I don't even know if it was that long ago, but it was, um, there was a there was a point where Matt Riddle was talking with Impact Wrestling. I believe they almost had a deal in place, but the thing was, he was kind of like unofficially in the WWE farm system for a while. You know, he wasn't signed NXT, but he was on the radar he, he was told hey we're, we're watching you so i believe when he was talking with impact in the past he had to get a uh, approval from wwe uh, something along those lines so i don't know how that's evolved and progressed over time but it looks like they're still talking to him and uh that one could be really interesting i've said many times they need to start tapping into signing the indie darlings um, they're the only company who's not been able to do that so far. If you want to call OVE and Sammy Callahan that, you know, um, they probably fall in that category, but they really need to hit some home runs in the, in the indie, indie, um, area. So this one's really interesting. Um, it says here, 85% chance we see Hernandez come back to be a part of LAX. Um, I don't, I, I, I guess I don't see how that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, I see how it makes sense, but LAX is already, you know, we got three guys, Conan, Diamante, like, how big is this going to get? Is this going to be Aces and Eights and NWO and all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean the good NWO. So, um, he has all the right to be there if they want to bring him, you know, original member. So, that could be very interesting. I just have to wonder what his potential role could be. They were looking strongly at... Michael Elgin, but with the drama that he's been facing online currently, it looks like that is something that they have uh, backed off on, and Michael Elgin is uh, no longer on the radar. Um, some other news and notes here regarding the creative. It's going to be a slow um, slow creative shift, so it's not going to be like you know, in March when we got the first Jeff Jarrett anthem taping where it just, you know, they were claiming, oh, it's going to be slow, but it was, it was pretty... Uh, 
it wasn't very gradual. It kind of hit us in the face pretty fast. Um, but the thing was, there was a lot of changes, but we didn't understand them. You know, they didn't really make sense on television. So hopefully everything is going to make a little more sense. Um, Anthem is, according to the report here, ready to make some serious offers when former TNA guys wrap up their contracts with WWE. So who they're talking about is Bobby Roode, Eric Young, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles. Now the chances of those guys coming back are probably slim to none, especially given the age of some of them. But they want to at least have the dialogue, and that's that's where they're going with it. You know, um, e even if it's a PR move, or even if it's you know um, something on the exterior to look look um, you know so the fans can see, hey, we're serious about bringing top talent in here. But it looks like they do kind of want to tap into some of the TNA past and the originals. I think they want some of the originals to to retire with the company. And it would actually help the Hall of Fame situation quite a bit. So this could be interesting, but they are prepared to make serious offers. He says here as well, and uh, you know, I dropped a video the other day about Lashley, Eddie Edwards, and EC3. I want all three guys to stay. I want to make that very, very clear. Um, uh, my personal opinion was that um, EC3 and Lashley are probably gone. He says here, EC3 and Eddie Edwards um, are likely to stay. Lashley likely to leave, and with Lashley it makes a lot of sense. It's not because he's you know not happy with the company or whatever. It makes a lot of sense if Lashley were, were to leave. Um, but he says in here, EC3 and Eddie Edwards, he fully expects them to stay. I have it on very good authority that EC3 was very unhappy last year. But now we got Dan, Don Callis and Scotty Amore coming into positions of power. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Maybe that smooths things out with some of these guys, with some of these wrestlers. So we are going to see what happens with that. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, there's a couple other things on here, but it kind of kind of deal with spoilers a little bit, so I really don't want to get into it. But, um, yeah, that's that's the news. It's very early for me. I know I apologize sometimes for you know, for misspeaking when it's uh, early, but uh, <laughs> I'm doing it again. So my apologies. I just woke up, but I really want to give you guys something here on the channel. And um, that is it. So I will talk to you guys soon. If you're a first-timer, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's have a big impact in 2018. Peace.